Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Lillian Matoya, President and CEO of Christus St. Vincent. The information we're about to share with you covers questions on the Delta variant and other COVID-19 related topics. These are questions submitted by readers like you to the Santa Fe New Mexican. We're delighted to provide answers to these important questions to help you make informed choices about protecting yourself and others from COVID-19. Three of our COVID-19 response experts will be speaking with you today. Dr. Teresa Ronan, she's our Director of Clinician-Directed Performance Improvement, Dr. James Marks, our Executive Director of Quality, and Dr. David Gonzalez, our Chief Medical Officer. We hope you'll find this helpful and informative. Please continue to be safe, remain socially distanced, wear your mask when you're indoors or around large crowds, get your vaccine if you haven't already, and always, always, always be sure to take care of you. Thank you for your continued support of Krista St. Vincent. I'm Dr. Teresa Ronan. I'm the Medical Director of Quality here at Krista St. Vincent. Today, I'm gonna to share with you some information about COVID-19 that helps us understand the pandemic as it unfolds in our community. Of our 2,400 associates here at Krista St. Vincent, 229 have contracted COVID-19. We have confirmed that 215 of these were community acquired infections, meaning contracted outside of work. Thankfully, nearly all of our associates have recovered and returned to work. In this graph, you are seeing SARS-CoV-2 testing over time. This graph shows a year's worth of data. The blue bars represent the tests done in an individual week and the orange bars represent the positive cases of those tested. You can see that we tested a lot and had our surge in November, December of 2020. But you can also see on this graph that we've been doing a significant number of tests in late August and early September. We have experienced another surge not quite like the one we saw back in November, December of 2020, but nonetheless a surge. Thankfully, I can report to you that our numbers are now declining. This is a look at our percent positivity rates over time. Percent positivity means an individual testing positive divided by all those tested. As you can see, we have hovered between three and 6% in the last several months. Our percent positivity rate is a little bit higher than what's reported statewide for overall percent positivity because as a healthcare organization, we're frequently testing patients that have high risk exposures and symptoms of COVID-19. Many healthcare organizations are taking a look at how the vaccine is impacting their hospitalizations and the patients that they care for. This graph looks at March through September 22nd of 2021. We chose March because this is when the vaccine was widely available to our community. Since then, we have taken care of 182 patients in the hospital. Of that 182, 84% were unvaccinated, while 16% were vaccinated. We have taken care of 22 patients, which met critical care status criteria, meaning they were seen by one of our intensive care providers. Of those, 86% were unvaccinated, while 14% were fully vaccinated. And of our 18 patients that passed away from complications of COVID-19, 83% were unvaccinated and 17% were fully vaccinated. I do wanna point out that two met immunocompromised criteria. And in those individuals, they may not have mounted a good response to the vaccine. Many people in the community have asked us, are you now seeing more children test positive for COVID-19? This question comes in part because schools are now open and children under 12 are not eligible for the vaccine. And the short answer to this question is yes, we are seeing a rise in children with COVID-19. From July 2020 through July 2021, we saw very few percentage of the population tested being children. In August of 2021, 19% of all those tested were children under 12 years of age. September is incomplete data because we are not yet through the month 
but so far, of all those tested, 17% are children under the age of 12. What I do want to reassure you on is that we are not seeing an increase in children requiring hospitalization for complications of COVID-19. The good news in the data that I have presented is that the vaccine is working. We see fewer patients being hospitalized with complications of COVID-19 if they've been vaccinated. The vaccine prevents serious illness and death. I encourage you all, if you have not yet been vaccinated, to do so. And if you have, I encourage you to get your friends, family, and neighbors to become vaccinated as well. Hello, my name is James Marks. I'm the Executive Director of Quality and Performance Improvement. My background is healthcare epidemiology and I've been a registered nurse for 42 years. Today, we're gonna to talk about COVID vaccine as well as any other questions that you might have. Currently, boosters are only recommended for people who received Pfizer or Moderna and are in the immunocompromised group. The recommendations for additional boosters for Pfizer only are expected to come sometime very soon. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is a, was a one-dose vaccine. Um, there is currently some evidence to suggest that a second dose may be beneficial. However, that has not been reviewed by the FDA or the CDC. If you have received Moderna or the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, stay tuned for what boosters may be recommended. Currently, the CDC is not recommending mixing um, vaccinations. They are currently looking at keeping you with the same vaccination, Pfizer um, with a booster of Pfizer, or Moderna and a booster of Moderna if you're immunocompromised. I think that we will be continuing to wear masks throughout the winter um, during a respiratory virus season, such as RSV and influenza. We saw that there was a decrease in both of those diseases last year because we were wearing masks and, so, and doing social distancing. And I think that it will actually continue for a while and maybe even just became an annual, uh, an annual wearing of masks, especially in crowded areas where you're not able to keep social distancing while indoors. I think many people have reported that they have felt better uh, and haven't had any respiratory diseases in the last year and a half. So uh, it, there is uh, eff efficacy with uh, wearing a mask. A multi-layer mask is, um, is acceptable. Um, a single layer of cloth is not acceptable. So um, a uh, handkerchief uh, alone wouldn't be sufficient. You should wear something that has at least two layers of cloth or a medical grade um, paper mask. Variants of viral diseases is a common occurrence and it happens with influenza. That's the, one of the reasons we get a different influenza shot each year. With uh, COVID, um, they, uh, the CDC and the WHO, the World Health Organization, went to a lettering system based on the Greek alphabet starting with alpha. And there are two groups of um, variants that have occurred. One is called a variant of concern, which has led to easier transmission, more hospitalization and deaths. And those have been the alpha, beta, the gamma, and the delta variants. There are now variants that have been identified all the way through the Greek letter of mu, that's spelled M-U, um, but those are, not uh, those are not variants of concern. Those are just variants of interest and we continue to watch that. As of the end of September, um, there are no new variants of concern that, uh, that have been emerged, uh, identified and emerged in the, uh, in the world. The flu vaccination formulation changes every year based on the circulating strain um, in the southern hemisphere um, for our northern hemisphere uh, where we live in the United States. Um, so there are two strains of um, A, influenza A, and there are two strains of influenza B that are contained in each of the vaccinations. And again, um, the variant strains change every year, and that's why you need to get a flu shot um, booster, a flu shot every year, and it continues to uh, hold your immunity from, inf from influenza hospitalization as well as, um, as death. 
I would say probably we will be getting uh, regular boosters if there are continued variants um, of, of COVID. Um, I will also say that um, influenza has kills four, uh, 40,000 people in the United States every year. And that is a fact that not many people have appreciated, and it's why it's so important that we continue to get our, our flu shots every year, because flu is a deadly disease and also causes hospitalization. The booster shots are the same formulation that you had from your original um, vaccine. For Pfizer and Moderna, it is an mRNA technology. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine uses a modified adenovirus um, as the way that the, um, the body gets the message to produce the antibodies to protect you from COVID-19. The state health department has a lab that can do specific testing for the type of variant that a person has. And we only send a small sample of all of the COVID positive tests to the state health department. Um, they are the only ones that have the technology to know the variant um, that's present in the community. The cases are a little bit different than hospitalizations. Uh, so if you look at the number of cases, um, probably 90% are unvaccinated of the Delta variant. And amongst uh, um, hospitalized patients, probably about 95% are unvaccinated. So even though you've been vaccinated, you shouldn't let your guard down, still need to wear a mask, social distance, and do all the COVID safe practices because the vaccine's not 100% effective. Um, it uh, started off about 95% effective, and with Delta, it's about 80% effective. Of all the variants of COVID-19, the symptoms are the same. Uh, so there's not a difference in the, uh, in the way that the disease presents itself. Um, what you should know is that it is easily, more, more easily transmitted. The Delta variant is more easily transmitted. Um, so uh, that's why it's important to make sure that you follow all of the recommendations for social distancing and mask use. The symptoms for COVID-19, including the Delta variant, include um, a cough, perhaps a runny nose, um, tip, typically not a fever, but sometimes a fever, uh, also sore throat, um, and especially if you have loss of taste and smell or smell, um, then uh, you should report that to your healthcare provider so you can get tested. The Delta variant um, spreads more easily because it takes less of the viral particles to make you sick. So uh, it does not last in the air any longer than the Alpha variant or the uh, original um, version of COVID-19. Um, it is the number of viral particles that, make you, uh, that can make you sick that uh, makes it more infectious. Uh, and perhaps um, it also makes you sicker, um, depending on, again, on your immune status and your body's ability to mount a response to being exposed to the, the virus. COVID-19 is not easily transmitted through uh, surfaces, door handles, or handling objects. Um, however, for general good safe hygiene practices, it is recommended that you do wash your hands frequently, use alcohol hand sanitizer, and then uh, use um, disinfectant wipes when uh, items might be uh, contaminated. And that's for just general health, uh, not just for COVID. Temperature screening is, was not really found to be an effective screening tool for COVID-19 because fever is not uh, present very often, probably in less than 30% of people will have a fever. So, uh, so the other symptoms um, are the ones that you should look for. If you have a child age 12 and older, uh, they should be vaccinated. Um, and uh, vaccinations are available through the Department of Health website. You can find a site that can uh, vaccinate you. We also vaccinate uh, 12 and older here at Krista St. Vincent. Once the FDA approves vaccination for children um, 5 to 11, um, we will also be offering those uh, vaccines for children. Um, ex we expect that probably to be sometime in the beginning of November. Um, in the meantime, all of the other COVID safe practices, wearing masks in school for children, um, as well as uh, social distancing. The school recommendations are three feet, uh, where you, we have heard social distancing at six feet um, in most settings, but for children, it's about three feet. 
um, and then encouraging children to be outside, um, including during their breaks and meal periods, um, to have them eat outside when they're not masked. Infections are passed on from person to person through respiratory droplets. So transmission of COVID from a, a pupil or a student to the teacher is unlikely if both of them are masked um, and they are maintaining three foot uh, distance. Uh, so uh, transmission is, is going to be unlikely. I know that uh, the teachers um, are all, have all been encouraged to be vaccinated. Um, and then, uh, so that's another layer to help protect the students. When we look at uh, where people have their source, uh, it is almost exclusively from family members, through socialization, through important events like weddings, uh, funerals, birthday parties, uh, and other um, socializations. So um, every time there is a holiday, um, there is an expected up uh, increase up, uh, of the number of cases of COVID-19 that uh, will occur. And this has been throughout the pandemic for the last year and a half. I want to be optimistic and I would say that we will be uh, in this COVID protection mode through at least the winter. And uh, if we can get through the winter fine, then I think by the spring, um, we will see uh, some more easing of, uh, of how we live and the restrictions that we are currently uh, bound by in order to protect ourselves and our families. I encourage you to encourage your family members as well as other people who still may be hesitant to get the vaccine that the vaccine is safe and effective. It's been given to millions of people and, um, and the benefit of getting the vaccine is certainly proven to outweigh the risks of side effects from the vaccine. I'm Dr. David Gonzalez, Chief Medical Officer of Christus St. Vincent. We're here today to talk about the Delta variant and it spread across New Mexico. Delta virus is a mutant of the coronavirus, and it's the same virus that we saw last year, but a different strain. What has happened is it's enabled itself to mutate through primarily unvaccinated individuals and spread across the globe, primarily in the United States, in the southern states, and in the southern parts of New Mexico. Current vaccines are very effective uh, against the Delta variant. Uh, the chance of the Delta variant mutating depends on the percentage of people who are vaccinated. When the coronavirus circulates the globe, it has a greater chance of mutating in unvaccinated people. And now with modern transportation, uh, viruses don't have borders and therefore uh, the greater the number of people that are vaccinated, the less chance a virus has of mutating. The way that is identified is through genomic sequencing. So the state of New Mexico takes a certain percentage of all the cases in New Mexico and does genomic sequencing on the, on the sample and they're able to detect if it is the Delta variant. The symptoms for all the variants are somewhat similar. We do notice mild symptoms in people who are vaccinated. The more serious cases that result in hospitalization or in death are in unvaccinated individuals. The Delta variant is very contagious. It's the most contagious of all the strains. We have noticed from studies that people who are COVID positive with the Delta variant have higher viral loads uh, than the other variants. And that is so for both vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals. But in vaccinated individuals, their viral loads decrease much faster, and therefore it's thought to be less contagious uh, amongst vaccinated individuals. Again, the best protection we have against these viruses after a vaccine is mask wearing. And I would encourage everyone to wear a mask while they're indoors. And, um, and when they're out in public spaces. Would also encourage social distancing, six feet apart, and frequent hand washing as well. Delta variant originated in India and was responsible for the big surge they've had. And with uh, frequent travel and 
we uh, noticed a big surge in our country starting in 2021. I think it's very safe for everyone to get vaccinated for all the uh, viruses that they're able to uh, get vaccinated for this season, uh, especially the influenza vaccine. Uh, that will be offered very soon uh, in October of this year here at Christus St. Vincent. And it's especially important during this coronavirus surge in that you don't want to have both uh, viruses at the same time and that could lead to more severe illness. So I encourage everyone to be vaccinated for both coronavirus and influenza virus. Vaccinated people who develop coronavirus are considered breakthrough cases. And the vast majority of cases in the United States are in unvaccinated individuals. This surge that we're seeing now across the country and in New Mexico is primarily driven by unvaccinated individuals. The symptoms that people experience with a COVID infection uh, vary, but they're more severe in unvaccinated individuals. In vaccinated individuals, it can appear with mild symptoms, such as runny nose, sore throat, uh, and may be mistaken for seasonal allergies or even the common cold. Currently, we seem to have plateaued with the Delta variant, and how long we will remain at this plateau is yet to be seen. Uh, there's always a chance of other variants emerging, as long as there's still significant numbers of individuals out there who have been, not been vaccinated yet. So I encourage everyone to become vaccinated. The Mu variant is a new variant that is circulating in other parts of the world, especially South America. And uh, they're currently doing genomic sequencing on this variant to see if it acts differently than the Delta and the coronavirus. But for right now, it appears that the vaccines that we have are highly effective against all the variants. I would continue any plans you may have for holiday travel, but I would advise that you travel safely. Obtain all the required tests prior to traveling, uh, wear your mask while you're traveling, wash your hands frequently, and uh, social distance as best as possible while traveling. Our modeling data shows that towards the end of the year or early first quarter uh, 2022, we may see a significant de decrease in COVID cases, especially in our state. In the meantime, I would advise everyone to continue their mitigation efforts of social distancing, masking, and frequent hand washing. I would encourage everyone to get vaccinated. There are still a significant number of school kids in our communities and across the nation who are not eligible for the COVID vaccine. Therefore, it's important that every member of a family who is eligible for a vaccine get vaccinated so that we can protect those who are unable to be vaccinated.